Recently, I installed Gen 2 for the first time live on stream. There's probably going to be a link up in that corner as well as in the description. And over the course of this stream, I had a lot of thoughts about the installation process, and I feel like I learned a lot about sort of the way that Gen 2 sort of works. And based on some of the comments that I received both during the stream and after the stream, I feel like I should do sort of an overview video talking about what I actually learned because I think there's a lot of people who have the same sort of misconceptions that I had because they haven't actually gone through the process. Firstly, I want to talk about the Gen 2 install guide. The Gen 2 install guide is one of, if not the best install guides I have ever seen. This is detailed almost to the point of being excessive. So under the configuring the network section, there is a bit in here that literally explains, where is it? Down the bottom here, some, here it is, that literally explains what an IP address is. There is a section in the first part about actually booting up the ISO that explains how to get into your BIOS. If you don't know how to open up your BIOS, you probably shouldn't be installing an operating system, but that information is in here just in case you need it. If you compare this to the Arch install guide, the Arch install guide honestly is kind of horrible. There's a reason why there's so many videos explaining how to install Arch Linux. Even when you don't compare them, the Arch install guide is still severely lacking in the amount of detail it actually has. For example, if we go down to the section about bootloaders, uh, right towards the bottom here, it doesn't even explain anything about bootloaders on the install page. It sends you to another page where now you have to go and like read this massive article that isn't really that well laid out either. Then if you want to do like grub, you have to go into the grub page and that'll tell you how to set that up. It's just a mess to work with. Comparing that to Gen 2 section on bootloaders, everything you need to know about setting up your bootloader is inside of the install guide. So this tells you what a bootloader actually does and why you actually need it. It gives you some examples of bootloaders you can use and how to set them up. So it has Grub2 being the default, but it also has Linux Loader as an alternative and it has EFI Boot Manager as well. Now, the only one that it doesn't properly explain is SysLinux, but not many people are going to be using that anyway. And that style is repeated throughout the entire install guide. For example, under the configuring the kernel section, we're going to have the default path, which is going to be kernel configuration and then manually compiling it. But let's say you're not really up to doing that. Let's say you want the kernel to be pre-configured for you. Well, in that case, why don't we go and just use gen kernel? But let's say you don't really want the idea of gen kernel. You instead want to go and just download a kernel binary like you would on something like Arch Linux or most other distros. Well, in that case, we could go and download one of the distribution kernels. Regardless of whether you're doing the default path and configuring everything yourself, or maybe taking one of the alternative paths and doing stuff a little bit easier, as long as you have a working system at the end of the day, the install guide says that's perfectly fine. As long as you're comfortable writing commands in a TTY, you know how to read, and you don't make really dumb, obvious spelling mistakes like I did, installing Gentoo is actually incredibly easy. It's not really any harder than installing Arch. There is a couple of extra things you need to do, but nothing is more complicated. Up until doing this stream, I had the idea in my head that installing Gentoo was somehow going to be difficult. And this didn't make any sense because I'd never actually gone and installed Gentoo myself. But I think this is the same way that a lot of people actually think about Arch. Even if they are completely comfortable using Linux, because they've never actually gone and installed Arch themselves, they feel like that thing over there is scary and they don't know how it actually works. But once you actually sit down and actually do it. It's going to take you a lot of time. Absolutely. I'm not going to deny that. Especially if it's your first time installing something from the TTY like that. But you'll realize that it's really not actually that difficult. Really the only major differences between the install process is that instead of using packstrap and pacman commands, you're going to be using a merge instead. When it comes to doing things like partitioning, mounting, networking, general system configuration, like setting your host name, setting your time zone, things like that, all of that stuff is exactly the same. And if I was to properly think about it, I obviously would understand that had to be the case. They are both Linux systems, but it just didn't click with me until I actually went and installed the distro.
Overall, it took me about three and a half hours to actually get Gen to installed. But that was three and a half hours with some stream difficulties and also forgetting how FDisk actually works. So if I was to cut that time out, probably would have taken maybe three hours, two and a half hours if I'm really pushing it. It didn't really take that long. Even though there is this default path and easier alternatives in places where you don't feel like taking those, you can make Gen2 hard to install if you really want to. I chose to use a distribution binary kernel and basically left my compiler flags at default. There were some minor tweaks I made, but nothing that major. And this works perfectly fine, but for performance, it absolutely isn't optimal. And the install guide definitely does encourage you to take those harder routes if you feel like you're up for it. With the exception of your init system, in my case being OpenRC, the basic Unix utilities, things like LS, CP, RM, the stuff that every Linux system on the planet has, and also your package manager being Portage, someone's going to complain about the way I pronounce that, Gen2 doesn't really encourage you to install anything else. So in the case of Arch Linux, you have base and base devel, and most people probably just go and install those, and when you do so, you get hundreds of extra packages. And unless I'm mistaken, I don't think there's an equivalent on Gen2, at least it's not mentioned in the install guide. So if you want those compilers and interpreters and all of the other tools that come in those packages, it's up to you to go and install those when you actually want to install them. One great example of this is you don't get a program to run root commands from your regular user account. Most Linux distributions just by default ship with sudo. Over on the BSD side, normally you'll have do as. But in the case of Gen2, you get nothing. And if you want to use one or the other, that's ultimately up to you to decide which one you want to use. I have to talk about the elephant in the room, or maybe the penguin, and that is that Gen2 is a source-based distro. This means that every time you want to install something, you are going to have to compile it. And that means the package time commitment absolutely is real. If you like waiting to get any packages installed, you are absolutely in the right place. Obviously, the really massive packages, things like your kernel and your web browser, do actually have binary versions available because even the most hardcore Gen2 guys actually have something they want to do with their day, but the majority of other applications will require you going and compiling them. Now, the time commitment obviously does very much depend on the hardware you're actually running. I have a 3600X, so in my case, it's not going to take that long, but if you're running, say, a laptop, maybe a laptop from a couple of generations ago, it's certainly going to take a while to get things like that done. Now, I want to preempt the three comments I know I'm going to get. The first one is, I am well aware that most packages don't take as long to compile as something like your kernel or your web browser. Most packages are actually quite small, but you cannot deny the fact that compiling the source code is always going to take longer than downloading and installing a binary. That's just how physics works. It might be a couple of seconds slower, it might be a couple of minutes slower, maybe it'll be a couple of hours slower. It very much depends on the application and what you're trying to compile. Second comment, you're not going to be installing stuff every single day, it's going to be every couple of days or maybe once a week. And yeah, that's a perfectly valid comment. And if you don't really care about wasting time on those occasions where you do need to do a system update, that's perfectly fine, that's your life, do whatever you want with it. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't a valid reason to want to conserve that time and actually use it for something productive. I would prefer to just go and download a binary and be done basically straight away. If you don't care though, fine, I don't really care. And the third comment is, Brody, you did it in a VM, obviously it's going to be slow, it's going to be however many times slower you want to say it's going to be. And that's absolutely true. Yes, it will be. But it doesn't change the fundamental problem that compiling source code is always going to be slower. Gen2 is a time commitment. You cannot deny that. But it's a time commitment you choose because you want more control over your system and of your performance. This doesn't make me an Arch fanboy. This makes me a realist. For my use case, I'm happy to trade that extra bit of control and that extra bit of performance to save a lot more time every time I want to install something. Now, one weird thing I noticed is with the exception of using an Arch-based distro, something like 
Arco or Manjaro, you don't really get anyone involved in the Arch Linux world saying that you installed Arch Linux wrong. You're meant to do this thing instead, install this program, do this step. No one really says that. But interestingly, both during the stream and also after the stream, I had exactly that sort of comment by a very small number of people using Gentoo. Now, I don't want to say everyone using Gentoo is like that. I'm sure most people are absolutely cool people. But there was this very loud group of people saying, oh, because I used a binary kernel, I installed Gentoo completely wrong. Even though configuring and compiling the kernel is the default choice, I hate to break it to you, but if you think the default choice is the correct choice, you and the Gentoo developers completely disagree with each other. This is what it says in the handbook. If you actually go and read it, whenever a certain choice is presented, the handbook will try to explain the pros and cons of each choice. Although the text then continues with a default choice, identified by default in the title, the other possibilities will be documented as well, marked by alternatives in the title. Do not think the default choice is what Gen2 recommends. It is, however, the choice that Gen2 believes most users will make. At the end of the day, if you have a working Gen2 system, you've installed Gen2 correctly. There is no right and wrong way to install it. Ultimately, though, going through the installation process made me realize that Gen2 is not the distro for me. That isn't to say that Gen2 is a bad distro. If you want to go and run it, be my guest. That's perfectly fine. Do whatever you want in your spare time. And I will keep doing live streams on it inside of that VM, but there's no way I'm going to be installing it on bare metal anytime soon. That'll be everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter, D, Stephen, Tease, through Tony, Dushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave and pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays, where I live stream twice a week, and I upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me, and I forgot how to do my outro. We'll do this one. I'm out.